Our second kind of tissue is connective tissue. Now, I figured I'd start off with the real oddball in the connective tissue family, and that's this thing. This is fat. This is adipose tissue. Uh, it's going to break all the rules, so we'll come back to it at the end, but it's a, kind of a pretty backdrop. You can see those little tiny nodes, those little black dots everywhere. Those are the nuclei. The rest of it's pretty much fat, and fat tends to, cells tend to get larger and smaller as you gain and lose weight. You don't really lose that much of the tissue. You just lose a lot of these little oil droplets, uh, but they're unusual. They're not your typical type of... Um, of, um, tish, of tissue cell, or connective tissue cell. Uh, in most connective tissue, it's going to be a little bit more like this. There's going to be a lot of stuff and very little cell. And the cells are making and maintaining the stuff. Now, stuff comes in two flavors. There's the fibers, as you're seeing here, and there's also all the stuff that's not fiber, which we call matrix. So generalized connective tissue has a lot of fiber, and then you've got specialized connective tissue, which has really got lots of, of matrix and a little less fiber. A good example of a specialized connective tissue is blood. Blood has a liquid matrix, uh, the plasma, and it's got a little bit of fiber. They use it for clotting, right? You can uh, make uh, fibrin, which is a clotting protein. So things like bone, it's got a lot of minerals, minerals matrix. It's not really fibrous, but yes, there is actually a fiber called collagen in it. Uh, but the main thing that you look at when you see it is the, is the matrix. So let's talk a little bit about generalized uh, uh, connective tissues, which is what I really like you to focus on. Uh, and let's start off with this, which is really the same as this, even though it may not look like it at first. These are fibers. This is a tendon that's been teased out so you can see the individual fibers here. And yeah, they basically just took one of those dissecting needles and kind of moved it up and down and scraped it and got all these fibers to come out. This is collagen fiber. It is a very, very animal thing to make collagen. And um, it's one of those things that go back to one, our common ancestor. And Collagen is actually a family of proteins, so there's different kinds of collagen uh, in the body. But this is what it looks like, these collagen fibers in a tendon when you just tease them out. If you don't bother to tease them out, this is what you see. Now, ignore color on slides. Please, please, please don't try to learn things through color. I know it is so tempting because sometimes it's just the most common thing and the easiest thing to spot but the colors are just an artifact of the dyes that are being used. So in this case, we've got, this, this is also tendon, and you can see the fibers are just how they're going nice and smooth across uh, the tendon. And they're laid down in a very regular array, so we call them regular uh, connective tissue. They're dense, so it's a form of dense connective tissue, meaning that they're packed in like sardines, those fibers. And there's a few cells in there that are helping to maintain it. So uh, here we've got this lovely uh, dense regular connective tissue from a tendon. Here we have the same thing, but it's been teased out. Okay. Now, this is great if you have all your lines of force going in a single direction. If all your lines of force are going in one direction, you want all, pretty much all your fibers going that way. But what if you've got lines of force going in multiple directions? Okay, I know lines of force is a, a term you probably thought you'd never hear again after physics. Biologists, yes, we actually do use it from time to time. And determining how uh, tendons work or cartilage works uh, or how any of your connective tissue works are going to go back to this line of force thing. Don't panic. We're not going to go into that now, but just so you know, we do use this stuff. So if you've got lines of force going in multiple directions, so you're going to do something uh, that's going to look a little bit more maybe like, um, hmm, like this, okay, or like this, okay. So when the, line, when the fibers are being laid down in different directions, we call it irregular 
And somebody really stayed up late nights figuring out that term, right? So then it's called irregular connective tissue. And the irregular connective tissues, again, they've got fibers going every which way. And in this particular case, this is very different in another way from this last one. Can you spot the other way that this is different besides having all the fibers going every which way in a mishmash? They're loose. They're not densely uh, packed like they were in the tendon. So this is called uh, loose irre irregular tissue. Again, somebody stayed up nights coming up with the word loose. You know, in biology, we come up with a complex way of saying just about everything. And here histologists say loose, irregular, and loose, uh, regular, or dense, irregular, or dense, regular. You know, it's for once in your professional career, you're getting something easy. Say thank you and go with the flow. So, this is a good example of a loose, irregular connective tissue. Now, sometimes the fibers aren't all the same. Some, there's, like I said, there's specialized fibers sometimes, like the fibrin in blood. And sometimes we need special dyes to see them. This is an example of elastic tissue. And uh, there's just a lot of kinks in the, the bands of uh, protein. That, that allow it to expand and contract like a rubber band. And, uh, but you usually don't get to see the elastin. Most of the time the elastin has, has to be specially stained to see it and you usually don't get to see it on an everyday slide. And then you also have the cases where you've got that matrix stuff and some fibers in with it. So this beautiful, absolutely beautiful slide, okay, is a example of uh, connective uh, fibrous cartilage, okay? And fibrous cartilage literally is cartilage, which is a specialized connective tissue. It's got a lot of matrix in it, a particular type of compound in the matrix, but you can see all these beautiful little fibers through it, okay? So that's it for connective tissues. There's gonna be a lot of them, but they're going to be important to recognize. As remember, they're not going to have be uh, a lot of cells. They're not going to have a lot of cells. Uh, they're usually, with the exception of this one, they're going to be almost all acellular. Um, oh, I almost missed a slide. I am so sorry. Isn't that a beautiful one? That's elastic cartilage, by the way. So this is stained, so you can see the elastic fibers up here, there's a lot of them. And then you can see the cartilage structures. The, the, the cells are in these little chambers inside the matrix. The chambers are called lacuna because they look like little moons. But look at all that fiber in there as well. So this is elastic fiber uh, cartilage. Where do you have elastic cartilage on your body? I've got to move my uh, earpiece for this. But if you look at my ear, I can take my ear, I can fold it over, and it springs right back. That's because the cartilage in the ear is a form of elastic cartilage. So um, lots of matrix in here, lots of fiber, elastic, uh, uh, they're elastic fibers, so it's an elastic cartilage. So uh, with that said, um, we're ready to look at the next sets of tissue, which is the nervous tissue, that'll be number three. And we wanted to look at this stuff first because nervous tissue, okay, you'd think it had have a lot of neurons in it, but one of the things it has is an awful, awful lot of connective tissue, okay? So as we look at the nervous systems, we, you look at the brain, you look at nerve cords and organisms, you're going to see a lot of stuff holding it together uh, and supporting the neurons that are present. 